Welcome to another Simple Engineering Snippet. In this instructional video, we work an example problem involving a system with a single pump discharging through a 1,000 foot pipe terminating in a large storage tank. We will be calculating the net positive suction head available for the pump, the pump discharge pressure, and the electrical power supplied to the pump. The following data is provided. A pressure gauge at the suction of the pump indicates 20 pounds per square inch. The length of the pipe is 1,000 feet. The velocity at the pump suction is 15 feet per second. The head in the tank is 100 feet. Also provided is the vapor pressure, specific weight of the fluid, the friction factor, and the sum of the minor losses for the 1,000 foot pipe. The diameter at the pump suction is 8 inches. The diameter at the pump discharge is 6 inches. Also provided are the pump hydraulic and motor efficiencies. Let's label some points. Alpha is the pump suction, Bravo is the pump discharge, Charlie is just inside the tank. Let's start with finding the net positive suction head available. Net positive suction head is the difference between the absolute stagnation head at the pump suction and the vapor head. We are provided everything to calculate the absolute stagnation head at the pump suction. Note that we are using a standard 14.7 pounds per square inch absolute for atmospheric pressure. The absolute stagnation head is 83.7 feet. Now let's find the vapor head. The vapor pressure is provided in absolute units, so this calculation is straightforward. The vapor head is equal to 0 0.784 feet. Subtracting the vapor pressure head from the absolute stagnation head results in 82.9 feet. Note that we have calculated the available net positive suction head. This is the actual net positive suction head available at the pump suction. We would need to obtain the required net positive suction head from the manufacturer pump curves for the provided flow. We are not doing this in this example. Now let's work on finding the pump discharge pressure. We will apply conservation of energy from the discharge of the pump to the tank. Before we apply conservation of energy, let's calculate the volumetric flow rate and the velocity in the 6 inch pipe. Now let's apply conservation of energy from the pump discharge to the large tank. First, we'll make some simplifications. We set the datum to the elevation of the discharge of the pump, so the elevations at points Bravo and Charlie are zero. The tank is large, so the velocity at point Charlie is zero. Finally, we chose point Charlie at a depth of 100 feet, so the pressure head at point Charlie is 100 feet. Solving for the pressure at point Bravo, we see that we only lack the head loss in the 1,000 foot pipe. We have everything we need to calculate the head loss. It is 35.1 feet. Now going back to conservation of energy, we plug everything in and convert to PSIG. We could ask why the answer came out as a gauge pressure, not absolute pressure. The answer lies in the fact that we did not include atmospheric pressure acting on top of the water in the tank. At that point, we were working in gauge pressure. Now let's find the electrical power to the pump. We will again use conservation of energy, this time applied from the pump suction to the pump discharge. You will notice that the pump head term is on the left side of the equation. Physically, this equation says the energy at the pump suction plus the energy added by the pump equals the energy at the pump discharge. We solve the equation for the pump head and plug in the numbers and units obtain that the pump head is 82.8 feet of water. We found the pump head, but we are looking for the electrical power to the pump. Pump head has dimensions of energy per weight, so we can obtain the hydraulic power by multiplying the pump head by the volumetric flow rate and the specific weight. These are all known. I chose to convert the answer to horsepower, although that is not really necessary. The hydraulic power is 49.1 horsepower. This is the power that a pump is adding to the fluid. We want to calculate the electrical power supplied to the pump motor, so we're still not done. We are provided the pump hydraulic efficiency and the pump's motor electrical efficiency. Multiplying these efficiencies together results in the wire to water efficiency. We can use this to determine the electrical power supplied to the pump motor, which is 78 horsepower. Now we convert horsepower into the requested units of kilowatts and obtain 
58.2 kilowatts. For many pump installations, the diameters of the suction and discharge pipes are the same, resulting in the same velocities at the suction and the discharge. The velocity terms cancel out when calculating the pump head. I am skipping the details, but this leads to the well-known equation for hydraulic power. Hydraulic power is equal to the volumetric flow rate times the pressure rise across the pump. Using this approach, we obtain 46.2 horsepower for the hydraulic power versus the value of 49.1 horsepower. In this example, that equates to an almost 6% error. I hope you found this instructional video useful. If so, then please like and subscribe. Thanks, and have a great day.